Good morning, family. Good morning. Continue with our series, following Jesus. We'll be taking deeper look into a characteristic of Jesus. One that is so contrary to how a king would act. We should also possess this characteristic. This characteristic should draw us, draw unbelievers closer to us and ultimately end up in them wanting to know and then having what we have, a relationship with Jesus Christ. The characteristic which I am referring to is servant. Please turn with me to John 30, verse 12 to 17. I'm reading from the New International Version. <laughs> when he had finished washing their feet, got it back. <laughs> when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. <coughs> Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. Before I continue, can I ask that we briefly think about that question? Do you understand what I have done for you? Let's continue. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. In the days of Jesus, was customary for a servant to wash the feet of anyone entering the house from the road. It was not merely a way of washing off the dirt from the person's feet, but it was a gesture of honor and respect. It was a tangible expression of welcome by the host. There was no servant at this supper. The disciples offered to prepare supper, and it was their responsibility to ensure that someone was there to wash it. Perhaps forgetting about this custom, they did not offer. Jesus took the role of the servant and washed his disciples' feet. Please also remember that the feet in these days were extremely dirty and sweaty as the mode of transportation was primarily walking and, you, and usually for long periods of time in extreme heat. I think you can just imagine the state in which these disciples feet were in. And here was Jesus, God, washing these feet. How contrary to what the king would do. So, when Jesus asked, do you understand what I have done for you? He was teaching his disciples humility. Jesus is, is teaching us humility. Can we truly serve if we are not humble? Thank you, Jesus, for your perfect example. So, Jesus was showing that servanthood was not beneath him. If servanthood is important to our Lord, should we not take notice and do the same? Let's go to John 13 verse 3 to remind ourselves of who Jesus is. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power 
and that he had come from God and was returning to God. You see, Jesus understood who he was. He was God in human flesh, sent by his Father on a mission to reunite men and women to himself by breaking down the barriers of sin. However, for Jesus to be, to be obedient to his Father's permission, he had to lay aside his prerogatives of being God in order to take on the nature of a servant in human likeness. But Jesus' act of washing his disciples' feet, Jesus was symbolizing the removal of his outer garments, the laying aside of his royal divine privileges. In verse 14, Jesus then tells his disciples that they should wash one another's feet. Jesus is telling us that we should wash one another's feet. We should serve each other and our neighbors. <coughs> Being an ex to church, serving is part of missionary. And we should start practicing this at church first before we go into the mission field out there. Galatians 6 verse 10 says, Therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Let's read John 13 verse 16 again. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Jesus was using two illustrations here. One of a servant and one of a messenger. The servant is referring to servanthood and the messenger is referring to missionary. The great commission from our Lord is to go forth and make disciples by spreading the gospel. We are on a mission to spread the gospel. We are messengers. We are missionaries. Servanthood goes hand in hand with missionary. Both of these should be done in everyday opportunities. How is it possible to be a true missionary without servanthood? It isn't. Christ served. And Christ proclaimed the gospel. True missionary is accompanied by a servant. So servanthood goes hand in hand with missionary if we were to follow Christ's perfect example. How are we to be servants? Servants make themselves available to serve. So many of us cram our schedules so full of activities that we have no time to serve in church or anywhere else. Much like the soldier, a servant must be ready. 2 Timothy 2 verse 4 says, No one serving as a soldier gets involved in civilian affairs. He wants to please his commanding officer. If we only serve when convenient, we will never truly serve. Right. Servants do what is needed, even when it is inconvenient. As a servant, we don't get to pick and choose when or where we will serve. Being a servant means giving up the right to control our schedule and allow God to interrupt it whenever he needs to. Servants also pay attention to needs. Servants are on the lookout 
for ways to help others. When they see a need, they seize the moment to meet it. Again, Galatians 6 verse 10 says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who believe, belong to the family of believers. You see, when God puts someone in need right in front of us, God is giving us the opportunity to grow in servitude. We miss many opportunities for serving because we lack sensitivity and spontaneity. Great opportunities to serve never last long. They pass quickly, sometimes never to return. Seize the opportunity. Proverbs 3 verse 28 says, Do not say to your neighbor, Come back later. I'll give it tomorrow when you have it with you now. Servants also do the best with what they have. Servants refuse to make excuses, procrastinate, or wait for better circumstances. Servants never say, one of these days, or when the time is right. They just do what needs to be done. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 4 says, Whoever watches the wind will not plant. Whoever looks at the clouds will not reap. If we wait for perfect conditions, we will never get anything done. God expects us to do what we can with what we have, wherever we are. Servants do their tasks with dedication. Colossians 3 verse 23 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for me. Jesus specialized in menial tasks that everyone else tried to avoid, like washing feet, helping children, fixing breakfast, and serving lepers. Nothing was beneath our Lord and Savior because he came to serve. Jesus did not do these things in spite of his greatness, but because of it. And he expects us to follow his perfect example. The little things in life determine the big things. Do the little things. And God will assign the big things. My family, let's check our hearts daily. Are other things getting in the way of us serving as we should? I close off with the blessing in verse 17. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do that. In other words, once you realize or understand these things of servanthood and missionary, you will find happiness when doing it. A true happiness that comes only from God. Thank you, Father God. Amen.